In the UK, a rebellion is brewing. More than 100 lawmakers are opposing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. These are MPs from his own party. And what's their grievance? His Rwanda migration law. It's like a bad habit for London. They can't seem to abandon it. Last month, the UK Supreme Court scrapped this plan. They called it unlawful. Most leaders would have accepted the defeat, but not Rishi Sunak. He decided to sign a new deal. His Home Secretary travelled to Rwanda yesterday and he signed another agreement with the government there. The hope is this will satisfy the courts in London. And how is that? Because Sunak is also working on Plan B, an emergency bill to deal with the court's concerns. Like, will the migrants be treated well? Will the UK pay for this process? And will Rwanda be safe for them? The opposition does not think so. Just a short while back, Labour leader Keir Starmer raised some important questions in Parliament. This is what he said. When we send people there under this treaty, we have to pay for their accommodation oh. and their upkeep exactly. for five years. Oh. And that's not all. This morning, a government minister admitted that anyone we send to Rwanda who commits a crime can be returned to us. This about is ensuring that the concerns of the Supreme Court have all been addressed in a legally binding treaty that will allow us to operationalise the scheme. But I'm glad he raised the topic of legal migration, which I agree is absolutely far too high, Madam Deputy Speaker. That's why this week we've outlined a plan bigger than any other government before to reduce the levels of legal migration. Which brings us to the party rebellion. There are two Tory camps right now. One is the hard right. They want Rishi Sunak's bill to sidestep human rights obligations, specifically two of them, the UK's Human Rights Act and the European Convention on Human Rights. Tory hardliners want Prime Minister Sunak to ignore these obligations. This is the hard right camp. This is led by Sunak's former Home Secretary, Suela Braverman. She would love to humiliate the Prime Minister. After all, he was the one who fired her. The second camp is more centrist. They say human rights is a red line. And this group is made up of one, the One Nation Caucus. It has 106 Conservative MPs. They won't support any effort to dilute or ignore human rights. So Prime Minister Sunak has a tough choice. Reports say he could introduce the bill this week. Once he does, it's up to the MPs. His party's working majority is 56 if either of the camps gang up, he could lose the vote. And it would be his second loss as Prime Minister. The first came earlier this week. Around 30 Tory MPs joined the opposition. They agreed to set up a compensation board in an infected blood scandal. The case dates back to the late 1970s and 80s. Rishi Sunak lost that vote. And days later, he faces his second defeat. So what's his strategy? Reports say Sunak's bill will strike a middle path, something that will appease both sides. It's a do-or-die move. You see, migration was the big Tory promise in the 2019 election. They promised to bring it down below 250,000. Below 250,000 per year. That's the number they promised. And what is it right now? More than 745,000. So forget keeping the promise. The Tories have tripled the migration numbers, which is why Rishi Sunak is betting on the Rwanda plan. He needs those flights to take off. It's probably his last gamble. Because if the elections are held today, the Tories will lose. In fact, why today? Any time in the future, they will most likely lose. The Labour Party has a 20-point lead on the Tories. It's, it's just a question of when the election is held. The deadline is January 2025, but Sunak is unlikely to wait that long. Reports say he will call for an early election next year, maybe in the month of May or November. Those are the two dates being mentioned. Now, Rishi Sunak will be hoping to make some ground by then to narrow the gap with Labour. But honestly, the forecast looks worse. The UK's economy is expected to grow by 0.7% next year. To give you some context, the U.S. is expected to grow by 1.5%. The European Union by 1.3%. So the U.K. is lagging behind, 07 Plus, people are facing a cash crunch. Since the Second World War, every government has managed to increase household income in Britain. Every government except this one. 
Since 2019, household income has fallen by 3.1%. So the writing is very much on the wall. Every opinion poll has Labour sweeping the next election. For the Tories, it's more about damage control now. And for Rishi Sunak, it's about saving face. He is already called the unelected Prime Minister. If he leads the Tories to a rout, his legacy would be tarnished forever.